The first question we need to answer is, who exactly makes the B20 streaming microphone? EPOS sponsored this video, and in a nutshell, they're the result of a previous joint venture between DeMont and Sennheiser that is now its own independent brand. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this thing. Definitely A plus for product protection. That is some fine, fine packaging. Here, let's see if it's any good. No, no, I won't do that. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be good today, David. All right, let's pull out our microphone. Oh, interesting. So it's got like kind of a, a side arm. The arm rotates 360 degrees and is 3 8 threaded. So you should be able to mount this to pretty much any audio equipment that you would want to. Okay, if you don't want to mount it to an arm, it does come with a base. And then presumably there's also, ah, oh, yes. Oh, okay, yep, that makes sense. Oh, wow, all machined aluminum. Super, super rigid. And what else we got included? Not bad. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look, I'm just trying to show you the thing. A quarter inch threaded bolt. And then we've also got a USB type A to type C. That's nice. Everything should be USB type C at this point. It is a little bit more complex and a little bit more costly to implement into the product, but it's got clear benefits, even if you're not taking advantage of all the features like, you know, super high power delivery or whatever that obviously a microphone wouldn't need. And one of the big ones is just, look at that. You plug it in any way you want. And perhaps more importantly, it's really, really durable. We actually did a test where we unplugged and replugged it 10,000 times and USB-C held up to the challenge, whereas Micro-B did not. Wow, I never thought a microphone could be so dangerous. This is the safety guide. I've never actually read one of these. <laughs> Always include this safety guide when passing the product on to third parties. Oh, no way. <laughs> I was trying to assemble it wrong and they won't let me. I wanted to put it like this just to show that like, oh yeah, make sure you don't assemble it wrong. But the one end of the oval is flattened out. Oh. So you can't put it in the wrong way. Linus More products should be designed to be Linus proof for all the Linuses in your life. Don't be a Linus. Do you know Linus is slang for penis? What? Let's take a closer look at the microphone. So it appears as though the intention is for it to be addressed. I'm gonna guess the side with the mute button and the volume knob and not the side with gain and pickup pattern. It's got four pickup patterns. So you've got stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and bi-directional. So these are useful for all kinds of different applications. Cardioid you wanna use if you're getting real up close and personal with your microphone. If you like that kind of sound, you wanna block out ambient sound. Omnidirectional would be if you just wanna put it in the middle of a conference table and be able to hear everyone, everything that's going on. Bidirectional would be great for conducting an interview with someone across the table from you so you don't pick up some of that nearby side noise, but it picks up both of you really well. And then uh, stereo would be if you wanna make a stereo recording, I guess. It doesn't come up very often from in like a podcasting context, but hey, you know, I'm sure someone has a use for it for like, Art. On the bottom, the last thing that I didn't show you guys yet is that there's a headphone jack. So it's pretty typical for these USB microphones to have both a, an audio input and an audio output that goes through them, which allows you to monitor yourself with zero latency. Because if you try to monitor yourself through the computer, there can be a bit of a delay. So you're talking and then you hear yourself a little bit later and it can be extremely distracting. I actually hosted WAN show like that for years. Oh. All right, that's a little bit, okay, we're gonna have to, Woo, we're gonna have to lose some gain here. I'm a, I'm a bit of a hot boy, like from a, like uh, uh, audio microphone perspective. I tend to talk really loud. Man, you know what? I kind of want it, I kind of want it up a little bit. I usually prefer to have my mic a little closer. Now, while I get this dialed in, EPOS doesn't actually say whether this is a condenser type or a dynamic microphone, but most USB microphones are condensers and particularly the ones with adjustable pickup patterns are generally condensers. And the main benefit of a condenser is that you get better frequency response and sort of generally more accurate inputs, but it does come at the cost of more background noise. Whereas with the dynamic microphone, you gotta get real in close and personal with it. Otherwise you're gonna be hearing everything from your AC to your neighbor backing out of their driveway and everything else in between. Now, of course, if you did wanna hear some of that stuff, let's have a listen to what one of the other pickup patterns sounds like on this. Here's Omnidirectional. Hey, um, David, how's it going? Great. Yep, I can hear you. And then if I flip back to Cardioid, whoop, whoop, that's the wrong dial. <laughs> 
There we go. Uh, David, how's it going? It's going good. Yeah, it doesn't matter what your name is. Little bit of handling noise. Generally speaking, you shouldn't be rubbing your microphone while you're using it anyway. That's not that's not recommended. In terms of table bumps, bumping my elbows a little bit. There's a little bit, but not bad. If I flip back to omnidirectional, you guys are going to hear. Yeah, that's uh, that's quite a lot worse. I mean, these are the main concerns when you're using something for gaming, right? Because you're actually you're moving around, you're sliding your hands around, so. You know, you've got keys going kind of clickety clack. This is another example of why in a gaming or podcasting setting, whether you're taking notes or just playing a video game, uh, you, you don't really want omnidirectional, <laughs> an omnidirectional pickup battery. That's not really the best. Hello, hello, hello. Yep, it's muted, it turns red. Subtle, but easy to see. There we go, that's back. Based on my experience with it so far, I would definitely recommend, like with many microphones, the use of a pop filter. You can definitely pick up some breathing and some plosives, but it's far from the worst I've ever encountered by a long shot. And, oh, of course, they've got their software, the EPOS Gaming Suite microphone. Oh, this is really cool. We can actually see in real time the profile of my voice. It's not that high pitched. Uh, I'm really heavy in the kind of 250 to 500 hertz range. You know, that's a higher voice compared to, you know, a really bassy man voice. Hi, I'm Batman. Yeah, that, that goes a little lower. Oh, interesting. I had actually noticed it didn't have a high pass filter or a low cut built into the microphone. It looks like you can configure that in software though. Ooh, voice enhancer. Should we try the warm voice? Yeah. Hello. Do a quick test recording. Let's see what I sound like in the warm voice enhancer preset. Do a quick test recording. Let's see what I sound like in the warm voice enhancer preset. Probably a little too warm, I think, for my tastes. Now we are listening to the clear voice enhancer preset. Now we are listening to the clear voice enhancer. I think we're gonna stick with off for voice enhancer. Of course, you can create a custom one if you want. Just be like, look, there's not enough bass in my voice. I need to crank the bass. This is the ultimate bass version of my voice. You know, Nicki Minaj, this is super bass, super, I'm going fishing, super bass. This is the ultimate bass version of my voice. You know, Nicki Minaj, this is, yeah, that's intolerable. Uh, it's <laughs> Moving on to noise cancellation. This sounds like a feature where it uses the microphone to, uh, you know, get rid of annoying ambient sounds in the headphones, but that's that's not what it does. It actually is supposed to just clean up your digital recording. So we're gonna start at zero and record for a little bit here. Then we're gonna step it up to 50, where theoretically we should get a bit of a cleaner sound to the recording. But as we move all the way up to 100, it's also possible that we'll get a bit of a reduction in naturalness. It's not the sort of thing I would typically turn on, but it's up to you. Thing I would typically turn on, but yep, somehow I managed to describe exactly what was happening without even having listened to it yet. Uh, 50 is all right, 100 is definitely too much for me. So that's it, that's the EPOS B20. It comes in at 199 US. And you guys can check it out at the link down below. Thanks again to EPOS for sponsoring this video and thanks to you guys for watching Short Circuit. Subscribe.